بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Today's class inshallah we're going to start uh, chapter number two of we're going to start matter number two of chapter number two Last week we finished off matter number one in chapter one Today we will start off inshallah Chapter 2 and uh, uh, matter number 2 of chapter 2 and we will try our best to finish it. That The second matter is Athania. The author says Athania. The second matter. matter أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُشْرَكَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ فِي عِبَادَتِهِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُشْرَكَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ فِي عِبَادَتِهِ Allah is not pleased that anyone should be a share in worship with him. Allah does not is not is not pleased with that. لا ملك مقرب neither an angel ولا نبي مرسل. لا ملك مقرب means not an angel ولا نبي مرسل means not any prophet or messenger that is sent. This is the second matter that I'm reciting or reading to you. Then he says, وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا In Surah Al-Jinn. Allah said, he said, he quotes the verse of Allah, and the places of worship are for only Allah. They're for Allah alone. Don't invoke anyone other than Allah. And we'll get to that verse at the end of the class. So the second matter, the matter, that's the second matter, of chapter 2, that Allah is not pleased that anyone should have any share of worship besides Him in matters of worship. In Surah Al-Nahl, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا Verily, we sent among every ummah, every community, in every nation, a messenger, a messenger telling them to worship Allah alone and and keep away from the taghut which is all false deities. The common denominator, the common denominator among the messages of the prophets Allah sent in mess messengers and prophets is Tawheed in Allah. The verse says وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ In every, every nation Every messenger came with this. The details were different. Some fasted from talking. It's prohibited in our religion. But the common denominator, no doubt about, is Tawheed in Allah. The author here is saying, Allah, in this matter, Allah is not pleased with kufr and shirk. What Allah is not pleased with should never be anything for a believer to be pleased with. What pleases and displeases a believer must come from what pleases and displeases Allah. One who's a true believer, one who's a true believer loves that which Allah loves. One hates that which Allah hates. One is angered at that which angers Allah. When one gives any share in his worship 
along with Allah to other than Allah, that's shirk and uluhiyya. Here, the author didn't say shirk and uluhiyya, but the way it's worded, giving a share of your worship to other than Allah, that's shirk and uluhiyya. This matter, the author clearly meant shirk and uluhiyya. In, uh, uh, in Surah Al-Shura, Tallahi in kunna lafi dalal mubin. Allah quotes a quote of the people in hell, conversation they have. Tallahi in kunna lafi dalal mubin. By Allah, we, will tr we were truly in great, manifest, deep error. Why? إِذْ نُسَوِّيكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ We held you false gods, they're telling they're false gods, we held you false gods as equal in worship with our Lord of the Alameen. إِذْ نُسَوِّيكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ These people who this verse is talking about, they aren't those who made partners to Allah and Allah being the creator, sustainer, provider, giver, the one who gives life, the one who gives death, or that he had a share in his kingdom. That's Tawheed al rububiyyah They had no issue with that. They were actually the one the verse is talking about. They had Tawheed al rububiyyah good. The verse is talking about those who had an issue in this, in this matter that we're talking about today. These are people who made partners to Allah in their worship going up to Allah. They made shirk in that. In their acts, going to Allah. In their love, in their submission, in their humility, in their intercession, in their prostration to Allah. They made a share to other than Allah. Shirk is the biggest calamity committed on the face of this earth at all times and all places. Shirk is the biggest type of oppression. Shirk is the biggest form of ignorance. The opposite is, Tawheed is the peak of justice. Tawheed is the most honorable of all knowledges and sciences. Allah forgives all sins, small and major, except shirk. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi. In Surah An-Nisa, twice. Allah forgives not, Allah will not forgive, that partners should be set up with him. In worship, this is in Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. And he give, forgives, وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ He forgives anything else to whom he wills. Decisive decision. Allah told us, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ In Surah Al-Zumar, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَلَقَدْ أُوحِي إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ It's been revealed to you, O Prophet of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to those before you, if you join others in the worship of Allah, then all your deeds will be in vain, and you will be certainly, this is talking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to messengers, not to me and you. So imagine how it's going to be the situation for us. You will certainly be among the losers if you commit shirk. Allah told every messenger, every messenger, including our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and those before him, if you commit shirk, your deeds will be erased, and you will be among those who are loser, losers. Tawheed is essential in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and Muslim, in Muslim, and uh, 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 authentic hadith. Uh, Anas radiyallahu an qal uh, ya ibn Adam innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la ubali and this is the wording of the one in Tirmidhi the, uh, the wording in Muslim is slightly different O oh, son of Adam as long as you invoke me and plead and make dua to me I will forgive I will forgive whatever you have committed and it's not much for Allah and he says, I will not, and it will, it will, it's not much for me. This is a hadith Qudsi. Ya ibn Adam, law balagat dhunubuka anana as-sama, thumma staghfartani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la ubali. O son of Adam, if your evil deeds reach the borders of the sky, reach the limit of the sky, and then you ask me for forgiveness, I will forgive you. 
ولا أبالي It's not much for Allah يا ابن آدم لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة Oh you son of Adam حديث قدسي If you come forth with the earth full of errors full of mistakes and sins and you meet me while this is the point of the hadith and you meet me while you do not associate anything or anyone with me I will bring forth my forgiveness for you ولا أبالي and it's not much for Allah Tawheed is the massive way that if a drop, if a drop was placed on a mountain of sins, it will erase and eliminate it. Sunan al tirmidhi as well, authentic and the authority of uh, and the authority of uh, Abu Huraira radiyallahu an. Allah will save a man from this ummah who stands before him with a record of sins. That fill 99 books or registries. Each book, each registry of those 99 goes and extends as far as the eye can see. He stands before Allah. Allah asks him, Did the angels wrong you? No. He says, No. He confesses the truth. Then Allah, his sins outweigh his deeds. They were more. Then Allah will order them to bring a card that has the word of Tawheed on it. La ilaha illallah. Tawheed. It will outweigh the rest. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Nothing is of any weight with Allah's name. With the word of Tawheed. The word of Tawheed outweighs everything. Tawheed is heavy. That's why we study it. Tawheed is heavy. An ounce of Tawheed hurled against sins. Knocks out its brain and its head into the dust. And obviously, shirk, just like tawheed is the bright of the brightest, shirk is the dark of the darkest. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَيْلَهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ In Surah Al-Namil, is there any God other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who responds to the distressed one when he calls? And the one, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى The one who removes the evil and the one who makes you inheritors on this earth, generation after generation, is there other than Allah that does that? A rhetorical question that doesn't need an answer. It's a statement, no, Wallahi, there's no Lord. There's no Lord other than Allah that relieves the distress, that removes the evil. It is only Allah. It is only Allah that hears the footsteps of a black ant on a black stone in the deep darkest of all nights. Tawheed is to ask Allah. And Tawheed is to seek aid in Allah and only Allah. Tawheed is to know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught that young child, young Ibn Abbas, who was still young, the universe, if the universe in its totality, that's Tawheed, came together against you in something that Allah did not write for you, it will not happen. Nothing will happen for you or against you except that which Allah wrote for you even if the whole world came against you with all their resources. That's Tawheed. It's sufficient to know that fear of shirk, that's how important Tawheed is, that fear of shirk should be in every believer's hearts. It was the fear of the man who demolished the statues. The one we call Millet Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ In Surah Ibrahim he said, Ibrahim said, he made, invoked dua Ibrahim, Millet Ibrahim, Hanifan, the man, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Oh my Lord, make this city Mecca. رَبِّ جْعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُبْنِي and keep me and my sons وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ and keep me and my sons from worshiping idols. Ibrahim at Taymi said, if the reviver of Tawheed Ibrahim alayhi salam, Millet Ibrahim, the, if the reviver was worried and he made dua out of fear of shirk, then who can be safe from it? I ask you about Allah, how many of you ever made dua to be free and safe from shirk al-uluhiyya? Ya'qub on his deathbed wanted to make sure. He himself was afraid as well over his descendants. Were you witnesses? 
I'm kuntum shuhada. Were you witnesses when Yaqub approached his death? He was on his deathbed. Yaqub on his deathbed, he said to his sons, What are you going to worship after me? What is it that you're going to worship after me? Surah Al-Baqarah, I'm kuntum shuhada. If hadara Yaqub al-maut, if qala li banihi ma ta'abuduna min ba'di, qalu na'abudu ilahaka wa ilaha abaika, Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq, ilahan wahidan, wa nahnu lahu muslimun. What are you going to worship after me? You know, when one's on his deathbed, he only speaks of serious, essential, important matters. His worry on his deathbed, what he is a messenger, and his children, who he raised, are they going to be on the tawheed or not? When they said, we shall worship ilahak, we worship your Lord, your God, wa ilaha abaik, and the Lord of your fathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, ilahan, wahidat, tawheed. In the, your fathers before you, one God. And we're going to submit to it. When he heard that, brought ease to him. That's why he wanted to, on his deathbed. Their shirk in giving partners in uluhiyya. Their shirk in rububiyya. And their shirk in asma and sifat. Every one of them has shirk. Here, since it was possibly a common epidemic during the time of the author, he specified this shirk as the second matter of chapter number two. And he said it's shirk in ibadah, which automatically means shirk in uluhiyya. Worship must be only for the sake of Allah. Everything in sharia considered worship must be for the sake of Allah. I'll repeat. Everything in the sharia considered worship must be for the sake of Allah. Worship is all matters of the heart. Worship is matters that you say. Worship is matters of actions. They all must be for Allah and solely for Allah. Whoever gives a portion of worship to other than Allah has fell in major shirk. Now, let's break down shirk and uluhiyya. We'll divide it into Three types. Shirk al will divide it into three types. Whenever, what one is whoever thinks Allah is worthy of being worshipped but puts a partner to him. That's very simple and clear. Like those who claim Jesus is the Sa'isa is the son of Allah. That's simple and clear. Everyone in this ummah knows that's clear cut shirk. That's the first type. The second type, which is a little bit more pr pr problematic, uh, it's a problematic area to many of this ummah, or its details is, is to give a portion of your worship to other than Allah. Like a portion of your heart worship to other than Allah. A portion you, to uh, your saying, your money, uh, your ibadah to other than Allah. And this has many forms. So number two, you look at your outline. That's why we gave you outline this time, because uh, uh, it'll help you follow along. Uh, it's for example, we're going to take examples. The first example is shirk and dua. Dua is when you ask Allah. And dua when you ask Allah is dua al talab. Seeking from Allah directly is dua al talab. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِلِينَ دَاخِرِينَ in Surah Ghafir, Allah said, invoke me, ask me for anything. I will respond to your invocation. So dua at talab dua at talab is when you ask Allah directly for something. You verbally say it. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا The verse that we'll get to at the end of this class, inshaAllah ta'ala, the verse the author uses. The masks are for Allah in Surah Al-Jinn. The masks are for Allah alone. So invoke no one along with Allah. Dua is the biggest means to get what you want of good and save you from evil. Whoever does not ask Allah, asks creation. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hadith, dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is worship. It's so important that he made it as if it was all of worship, but that's to draw attention as to how essential it is. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ibn Abbas, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. He taught that young, to, to, to a young, young boy to raise him on the upbringing of Tawheed. فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ In Surah Al-Ankabut, when the Mushrikeen used to embark on a ship, 
It was a nightmare back then. The ship probably not structured all that well. The winds come and the currents and waves. So they begin invoking Allah, making pure faith solely for Allah, even though they were mushrikeen. And Allah would answer them. Even though Allah knows beforehand from his ilm al ghaib he knows that when he brings them to safety, they're going to give a share of their worship to other than Allah. He knows that. And he still answers them when they had pure tawheed and dua. So imagine if they had full faith in tawheed, just that moment of distress, and Allah answered them, knowing, and Allah knew, that they're going to go back to their old ways once they hit the shore. Do you think he'll let your dua down when you make it? When your intention is perfect and your whole life is on Tawheed, not just moments of distress or hardship. And Surah Yunus, Allah tells his Prophet, don't invoke anyone besides Allah. He will neither He will not profit or harm you. If you do, you will be among the wrongdoers. In fact, Allah described those who make dua to other than Allah as the worst of the worst. They're classified by Allah as the worst of the worst. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ سُوتِ الْحَقَابِ وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِلُونَ Who's worse, who's more astray than one who calls and invokes besides other than Allah. Shirk and dua has basically four forms or four examples. To ask from creation what only the creator Allah can do. That's the major shirk. The creation that you ask or they, that they ask could be dead or alive, could be a messenger. It could be those who they assume is a wali. It could be a king or jinn. Asking a dead to cure a ill person. Shirk automatic, shirk akbar. Or victory over enemies. Or to remove a calamity. Or to bring rain. Or any matter that only Allah can do. It's major shirk takes one out of Islam because he believed the creation has power only Allah has. He gave a share of his worship to other than Allah. Second one is asking the dead. The, the first one would be someone asking the alive, the wali. The second one is, would be someone asking the dead. It could be wali that's dead or whatever. The third one is dua. Uh, uh, one who's not present, thinking he will help or know of your situation. And by you asking that he hears. You give him power that while he's in his dead, he can hear and know what's going on and help you. That's also major shirk. That's a third example. A fourth example to place mediators between you and Allah in dua. Thinking Allah will not answer directly, rather that he needs a mediator to send the messenger between you and Allah. That's the shirk of Quraysh. They believe that the statues that they used to worship, were they claimed that these were statues of righteous people. And they needed those statues to get to the righteous people who had died, to get the dua to Allah as mediators between them and Allah. And don't say this is something this ummah doesn't do. When, when I was uh, young in Medina, uh, they had, before they had companies to clean the haram, they had maybe about 30 or 40 individuals that they paid to clean the haram. And uh, one was somewhat crippled. And he was from Yemen. He would come and talk to my father as I memorized Quran in the Haram. And my father, of course, would ask him what he cleans up. He was the one in charge of cleaning the hujra of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would go inside behind the brass walls that you see. And he would clean over there behind the black, uh, brass cage. He, my father, and he said, we pick up bags. I remember as a child, I heard him. He said, we pick up bags and bags of, of trash from people who throw in letters to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him, they send pictures of themselves or their kids or their uh, daughters uh, asking them for, um, to fix their marriage. Uh, that, that's going to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's major shirk in itself. 
والذين اتخذوا من دون اولياء ما نعبدهم الا ليقربونا الى الله زلفى سوره الزمر the worship and obedience is only for Allah Allah wants it pure Allah quotes those who did shirk as saying as saying we take awliya protectors helpers lords gods beside them they say we worship them only why why did they say why did Allah quote them as saying we worship them only that they may be, bring us closer and near to you that's their purpose actually the shirk of Quraysh was at a lesser level of the shirk than some of the Shias and some of the Sufis and some of the ignorant masses who think and have hope and love and dua and imams and supposedly awliya in their graves. So the first one is dua. Okay, the second category of shirk al uluhiyyah we said dua is A, the second one is B. And B has a whole number list under it. B is dua, dua al-ibadah. Dua al-talab, A, means to directly invoke Allah, to directly ask Allah, Oh Allah, forgive me. Dua, regular dua, the one we all call dua. Make me happy, grant me, give me, take away this from my life or take away this hardship from my life. That's dua al-talab. Then you got dua al-ibadah, which is B. Dua al-ibadah is all other forms of worship to Allah. It's called dua al-ibadah. You, know, you got to know these terms in the books of the ulama. It's all other forms of dua, all forms and shapes. Ibad of the heart, the saying, the action, fear, hope, love, salah, fasted, sacrifice, reciting Quran and praising Allah. All that is the second form, dua al-talab. It's called dua. Why is it called dua though? Because worshippers in reality do these worships. They may be just worships, not directly invoking Allah, but they do them seeking something from Allah. Unlike the first form, dua al-talab, you directly ask Allah for something. Over here, dua al-ibadah, all other forms of ibadah, one does those worships for the sake of reward or fear of punishment. It may not be a direct invocation asking Allah for something, but his status is that when he does the worship is that he wants something from Allah. Dua al-talab is where one asks Allah for matters. He can do, save you, you make salah out of fear, from uh, hell. Dua uh, al-ibadah uh, uh, is you make salah out of fear from hell or for to enter Jannah. Dua al-talab is when you raise your hands. Dua al-ibadah is all other forms of ibadah. And we'll take some examples on shirk in this matter. On dua al-ibadah, which is all other forms of ibadah. First one, which would be A, for example, is shirk in your intention, in one's intention or purpose. Whoever desires the life, this life, in this world, and its glitter, and what that which it has, we shall give them in full, in this life. And they will have nothing in the life after. This shirk, is found in the munafiqeen whose nifaq is not we're not talking about the minor nifaq the major nifaq this shirk is found in the munafiqeen the major nifaq nifaq akbar no one appears as a muslim to the public yet has no islam in his heart except a munafiq major nifaq they are the hypocrites in the principle of the iman not in the details or minor stuff وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا in Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah when they meet those who believe they say we believe وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينَ when they go back to the shayateen they, they tell their friends we are with you وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ these are the hypocrites in the principle of لا إله إلا الله the major hypocrisy some of them may be even hypocrites in details as well. Some of those who fall under this shirk in niyyah, who are hypocrites in the major hypocrisy, also may have shirk in details of ibadah. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَأُخَادِعُونَ إِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَا لَا يُرَاهُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا سورة النساء The hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but he, he is the one who deceives them. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When they stand up for salah, they stand up with laziness and to be seen and to be noticed. 
These are the people who are classified a combo classification of shirk munafiqin. They have a combo classification. Their shirk, but their shirk also has an effect to it, an aspect of the major effect to it. That's the overall picture of shirk in niya. But there's some notes that one should know under the shirk of niya. One of those notes, some Muslims perform deeds and seek by doing the deeds the sake of Allah. They're Muslims on Tawheed. They seek for Allah. But his reward that he wants for that, he wants for that, is something in this life. He wants possibly wealth. He wants protection. He wants a happy life. He wants a cure for a child. That's his soul. That's his object. Uh, he's doing it for the sake of Allah. But his soul is not reward and this. His soul is to do it for this matter. The ruling on that is one is given his reward in thawab in this life. He wants a low worldly matter. No matter how high one might think it is. He gets the reward in this life. He did not do it for other than Allah. Otherwise it would be major shirk. But his full intention was for Allah. But he wants the reward for some worldly matter totally. Totally. His total reward he wants to be recompensated in this life. That's one form. One note. A second note is worse than the first. Which is one who does that. But not for something in return in this life to show off. And this falls under. This is the shirk al-azgar that we talked about last week. And we spoke about it at the, at the end of last week. And... I want to stay focused on our topic, which is shirk al-uluhiyya, the major shirk. But I have to pin, pinpoint to these uh, little matters so you get the understanding of the major shirk. A third note is those who do deeds for wealth, for profit. For example, they go make hajj to make money. They go do hajj on the behalf of others to make money. To migrate from one area to another, not for the sake of Allah, but to marry a woman. These are somewhat wiser than the previous category because at least they got some money out of it. The one who did it envy who did it for merely talk. But all that falls under uh, uh, shirk al-azgar. He gets his deeds in this life. The fourth one is deeds sincerely for Allah. No deficiency in it. Sincerely for the Allah. But that person has a matter or a status in which he's on a major shirk in it. Like one who says for example Isa is the son of Allah. Then he gives charity or does some good for the sake of Allah. They have deeds that are genuinely, truly for the sake of Allah. But they're on, on a status of major shirk. Or like those who become apostates and then do deeds for some kind of minor deed for the sake of Allah. They may get rewarded with wealth, kids, happy life, fame, whatever it may be. There's nothing in the life after. A fifth note on this matter. If one does salah, zakah, hajj, seek in the life after, and then did some matters for this dunya, you know, some matters he, he, he did uh, to show. He's whatever ends up more in the balance on the scale. And we also, I refer you to last week's class on minor shirk. That falls under minor shirk. The difference between shirk akbar, and shirk azgar is major shirk. Shirk al-akbar, one be in hell forever and it demolishes his deen. Minor shirk for a believer demolishes the deed. One demolishes the deed, one demolishes the deed. The next example of shirk in, uh, is, is uh, love. There's some of mankind who take and worship and all of, uh, uh, worship other than Allah, they love them as much as they love Allah. But those who believe, love Allah. Those who believe, love Allah more than anything. Ibn Zayd said, these are the mushrikeen who they associated partners to Allah and love them as much as they loved Allah. There are different types of love. We got to take some notes on love. Mahabba wajiba, obligatory love. The love of Allah, the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the love that to love that which the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love. This is the complete type of love for Allah. You have to have complete type of love for Allah. 
Like in this matter, in this matter that we're studying, if you know the wording of the author, he said, Allah dislikes shirk. So you must, the, the, the meaning, you must dislike it as well. You must stay away from it. The second type of love is mahabba tabi'iyya, natural love. Like love for food, for one who's hungry, natural love. Water for one who's thirsty. This love is permissible, but even this type of love uh, cannot be love of ennoblement, glorification, or humility in that which is equal to the love of Allah or above the love of Allah. The third one is mahabbat rahma wa ishfaq, love of mercy and sympathy and compassion. Like a father's love for his child, a mother's love for her child, or the opposite. This, for this to be permissible, it must not be love of ennoblement, glorification, humility, and being equal or above the love of Allah. Just like that. All categories, the previous category, uh, second category of love. If it goes equal or above the love of Allah, then it falls under the verse in the Quran. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَةً وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَا حَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ in Surah At-Tawbah If your fathers, if your sons, if your brothers, if your wives, if your child, if your wealth, uh, if your commerce, well, masakin if your commerce that you fear decline may decline, and dwellings which you are in become dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, then tarabbasu. Wait until Allah brings about a torment. The third love, mahabba, the next type of love, mahabbat uns wa ulf. Love of amiability. You find two Muslim brothers who love for the sake of Allah. Uh, they love each other for the sake of Allah. But there's also common interest between them. Like maybe knowledge. Maybe they're business partners. Maybe they travel with each other. These last three types of love. The last three that I mentioned. Uh, uh, I mentioned four so far. The last three are normal among Muslims. They, they're not shirk. If someone has it, he's not considered one to have shirk in the love of Allah. It's permissible. As long as it's not in love of ennoblement, glorification, humility, in that which will be equal or similar or above the love of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ loved sweets. He loved honey. He loved his wives. He loved cologne. Aisha was his most beloved wife. He loved the Sahaba, and among the, the most he loved out of the Sahaba was Abu Bakr Siddiq. We'll talk, this is not pertaining to Wala and Bara, but we'll talk in the future, inshallah, about Wala and Bara. Uh, the, the fifth category of love is Mahabba Shirkiya. Love that is Shirk. It's special love. That's only suitable for Allah. The love that's only suitable for Allah. If one loves other than Allah, the love that must only be for Allah, then he's committed major shirk. Shirk of that type which one, oh Allah will not forgive. Love of worship, this love over here that we're talking about, love that entails and requires humility, humbleness, submission, Surrender, glorification, ennoblement, that which only belongs to Allah. One who gives this kind of love to other than Allah has committed major shirk. If one gives this to other than Allah, he committed the major shirk. In a nutshell, love that requires complete obedience, submission, Dedication, sacrifice over and above everything else is love for Allah. That is the love that the mushrikeen associated other than Allah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So now we complete love. Let's move on to uh, shirk in khawf, in fear. Shirk al khawf. Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in uh, Surah uh, Ali Umran, Inna inna shaytan fala wa in kuntum mu'mineen. It's only the shaytan that instigates to you to fear his awliya. The shaytan instigates to you to fear the shaytan's side, the people on the shaytan's side, this helper supporter. So don't fear them, but fear me. Fear me, Allah is saying fear him only. If you are true believers, in kuntum mu'mineen. This is what the mushrikeen used to do to the believers, to try to get them to fear their statues or their dead, uh, who they call dead saints or their dead awliya. Fear is, has three types. The first one is al khawf al-shirki. Fear that is shirk. And that's to fear a human or creation with honor, love, humility, glorification, and noblement, as you would Allah. That's like fearing a dead person, that he, the fear of a dead person with love and honor, that he can harm, curse, or benefit you. Fear a statue or dead, that he may take your wealth or money, or he may be upset at you, or take away your blessings. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَعَسَىٰ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنْ يَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُهْتَدِينَ Surah Al-Tawbah The masks of Allah shall be maintained by those who believe in Allah in the last day. Perform their salah, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ Give their zakah, وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And fear not none but Allah. Fear not none but Allah. Khashya is fear with honor. It has with it honor, reverence. And love in a worship fa fashion. This type of shirk and fear, to fear from other than Allah in this manner, that one will be touched by harm by a creation, or that uh, he has powers only, fear of powers that only Allah has, this is major shirk. If one, for example, claims Allah gave a living or dead saint, shafa'a or some power, to do that which only Allah can do, that's shirk and khawf. If one claims that saint or whatever it may be, got those power on his own, Allah didn't give it to him, that's the same thing. He can bring him poverty, he can bring him illness. Fear of that is also major shirk. Whether you think Allah gave it to them, whether they think Allah gave it to them, or that those awliya attain that power on their own. This is what the mushrikeen thought of their statues and their idols. And you look and you resemble, you can compare, and I don't, we don't have time to give many examples, but you resemble the shirk that you see in some Muslim societies today, it resembles this very much. This is what the grave worshippers of, of the Ummah do today. They fear those who possibly some may have been righteous throughout their life. They're now in their grave. So now people worship them in a way. Sometimes it's evil people in the grave. Sometimes it's actually no one in the grave. They fear them like they fear Allah, possibly fear, for, fear, fear uh, 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 them more than Allah. How so? Let me give you a detailed example. How You go to someone. He'll give you probably a hundred oaths by Allah on a lie. And if you say, give me an oath by Sitna Zainab, someone who he claims is a wali or a waliya or someone they cherish, he may he, he, he will consider that saint with more power than Allah. He won't give you an oath and a lie by him. Why? For the sole reason that in his heart, the love for that wali is more than the love of Allah. His fear of that wali and the power he may afflict on him is more than the fear of Allah. So a hundred oaths by Allah and Allah will give you, but not one by sit, their sitna Zainab, like they say. You can see that an example how Shia uh, went to uh, flocks by flocks defending who they claim Sitna Zainab in Iraq. The motivation and inspiration that took the Shia that they're in, from Iraq and from Hezbollah 
and the sermons of their leaders is how they need to work, how they need to defend the monument, the grave of Sitna Zainab. Al Khawf al Yahmil ala Tark Wajib al Fi'al Muharram is number two. Number two type of fear. Fear that causes one to leave an ordain or to do a prohibition. That's the second type of fear. This is not shirk as many think of, but this is haram. Haram type of fear. To leave that which is obligatory, like ordaining the good, forbidding the evil, with no proper reason or justification except fear of people, that's haram. And this usually, usually, usually this fear is a figment of one's imagination instilled by the shaitan. It's an imaginary fear, or possibly at times it's a minute fear, but not sufficient for one to live and ordain or to do a haram. Like not speaking the truth. In especially those who the burden is on them, the people who are of ilm. Hadith Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nas an yaqula fi haqqin idha ra'ahu aw shahidahu aw sami'ahu. Let not the fear of people stop you from speaking or testifying to that which you know of truth. This hadith deters one, and it's in the Silsila Sahihah, this hadith deters one from not speaking the truth and makes it haram and that's basically why we call certain category of people the cowards of the ummah because even if it means loss of wages or fear of being hit or cursed or, or, or losing followers that's not the type of fear that you can remain silent in and for those who refuse to speak the truth this, is, this hadith is talking about those who refuse to speak the truth imagine how it is for those who are on the side of the evil. If this is for those who do not speak the truth, then imagine those who testify inside with the evil. This is an area where many go into uh, wrong in it. Uh, they read a quote of two of Ibn Taymiyyah as happened so much, or Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, for example, on fear, and then they declare half the Ummah Mushrikeen Kuffar. This type of fear that I just mentioned is haram, but it's not shirk unless it gets to the level we spoke about in number one. So number two we got, number three is Al-Khawf bin Allah Ta'ala. The next one is fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Fear of Allah that contains with it love, honor, humility, reverence. That's the fear that's a wajib. And it's a wajib for only from Allah, only to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Fear from the torment of Allah. You fear from the torment of Allah. In Surah Ibrahim. Uh, in Surah Rahman. This fear, whoever established this fear and establishes it good, this is among the peak of Iman and it's great unless, unless it makes one despair and give up hope. Then it has gone wrong. The fourth type of fear is Al Khawf Al Jibili, the natural type of fear. This is Mubah. If there's an actual reason for it, if there's an actual reason for it, natural fear, then it's mubah. For example, for enemy right in front of you and the sword is out. A lion right in front of you. You're drowning, in the middle of drowning. A house collapsing on you. It's shaking and collapsing. This is the fear that Allah said in Surah Al-Qasas about Musa, فَخَرَجَ مِنَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ He went out of the town fearing. Even though it's not considered shirk, there's another aspect to it. The stronger one's iman is, the less he'll have of this type of fear. You have some of the salaf who made sujood and a lion over their heads. And they, the, breathe, the lion breathing over their head, they, they didn't get scared. And if you see Musa, he was afraid at one time. Allah quotes him afraid. But towards the end of his messagehood, when Bani Israel were hesitant, He was at the outmost of iman. The next type of shirk is shirk and raja and hope. Raja is hope. Shirk and raja. To have hope in a creation in a matter that only you should have hope in Allah. And those who have hope, for example, in creation, that in matters that only Allah can provide, like for example, providing a child or doing a curse 
or something that's only under the will and control of Allah, this is major shirk that takes one out of Islam. Going to a doctor, that's means. That's not associating a doctor in the level of Allah. That's not believing uh, the doctor in himself can cure or has supernatural powers or a doctor in the west coast of the universe can cure someone in the east coast that becomes shirk with no means available. But if he goes and gives you medication, that's not shirk right there. Another example is shirk ruku' in sujood. Whoever makes salah, sujood, ruku' to a creation, bowing and prostration to any creation other than Allah in submission, subordination and surrender in ibadah and in love has made major shirk. لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. In Surah Fussilat, verse number, I think it's 37. Prostrate yourself not to the sun, to the moon. Prostrate yourself to Allah who created them. قل إن صلاتي ونسكي سورة الأنعام قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له لا شريك له When they asked the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Shall we prostrate to you? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما ينبغي لأحد أن يسجد لأحد One may not make sujood to anyone else ما ينبغي لأحد أن يسجد لأحد Note we mentioned in matters of worship, whoever dismisses a matter of worship to other than Allah, that belongs solely to Allah, committed major shirk. We said that in the beginning, as definition of shirk. So if one makes sujood to another, that's clear shirk right there. One who makes sujood to another other than Allah, that's clear shirk right there. There's a very important detail. This is one of the matters that I want your undivided attention in it. There's a very important detail, many neglect to mention, and you need to know in the difference between ruku' and sujood to other than Allah. And in, in, in actual qiyam as well, and other matters that follow along in this. It makes a clear distinction for you to know the difference between the two. This is one important matter. Uh, you only hear the big ulama mention it, big ulama who master tawheed. If someone does ruku' or sujood as ibadah to other than Allah, as ibadah, his intention is ibadah to other than Allah, committed major shirk and is out of the folds of Islam. If someone does sujood to other than Allah, he committed, pay attention to my wording, if he did sujood to other than Allah, he committed major shirk automatically. If one does ruku' to other than Allah, it's slightly different. We said, we said, shirk, major shirk is to do a ibadah to other than Allah, to dismiss it to other than Allah, that only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sujood is an independent ibadah. It's an independent worship outside salah. We have sujood at tilawah. We have sujood at shukr. So it's outside salah an independent ibadah. Ruku' is only a worship in salah. There's no ibadah in Islam that's called ruku' outside of salah. Independent ibadah. If one does sujood outside salah, you see someone doing sujood outside salah, you're going to say, oh, he's probably doing a ibadah of tilawa, probably passed the verse of tilawa recitation, he made sujood. Or oh, he probably got some good news, he's doing sujood is shukr. So sujood outside of salah is worship in itself. We have that established. On the other hand, if you see someone, someone comes to us right here in front of me. He does ruku' outside salah. He's either crazy or he's an innovator. Because we don't have nothing outside salah that's ruku'. There's no ibadah. The conclusion, the conclusion is whoever makes ruku' for someone other than Allah, not considering it, he's not considering it ibadah, then you can't classify him as a mushrik because it's not an independent ibadah in itself.
as long as he doesn't do sujood, because sujood is a ibadah. It's not, ruku' is not an Islamic worship on its own independent, outside of salah. There is no such worship outside of salah called ruku'. And we said shirk is to give a ibadah that belongs to Allah to someone, to dismiss it to someone else. Ruku' is not a ibadah. Someone does ruku', you call him a mubtada. Independent of salah. It's part of a ibadah, but it's not a ibadah. So it's not a ibadah in itself. If someone does ruku' to Allah, no salah, will look at him and say, what are you doing? He says, I want to make ruku' to worship Allah. Is he really worshiping? No. He made something totally up and he's an innovator. There's no ruku' independent of salah. There's no ruku' worship independent of salah, unlike sujood. If he made sujood outside of salah, that's ibadah right there. We know he's making sujood a shukr. We know he's making sujood a tilawa. So sujood is an independent ibadah outside salah. That been established that sujood is an independent ibadah outside salah. Ruku' is not an independent ibadah outside salah. If one makes sujood to other than Allah, he gave an independent ibadah. He gave a ibadah. We'll call it now to, for clarification. He gave an independent ibadah. He gave a ibadah. He dismissed it to other than Allah. Then that's major shirk. But if he made ruku' without considering it ibadah, it's not shirk because ruku' is not ibadah independently. Ruku